Let's create an iOS action sheet pop-up in Flutter that slides in from the bottom of the screen. Within the build method, I have created a Cupertino button that you see here on the right side. And if we click on it, then we want to show here a pop-up and therefore we want to create here this pop-up inside of a new method. And here inside you create then this Cupertino action sheet widget. Inside of this widget, you can then define all the actions that you want to show inside of this pop-up. So in my case, I want to display here three different actions. Let's try it out. I click on the show actions button and then it shows here this pop-up with these three actions. Optionally, you can also add here a cancel button at the bottom. So it's basically a separate button that is then displayed under our actions. And lastly, you can also display something on top of your actions. Therefore, you have here these properties title and message, which you can also supply. And normally you put then there a text widget inside. By default, if you click on these actions or on the cancel button, then nothing is happening. And to change this, you can simply go inside of the on press handler of an action. And here you can then call the navigator pop method so that it simply pops then our pop up here. Let's try it out. I click on an action and you see it hides then our pop up. And I also can click here on the cancel button and it will also hide our pop up. And finally, you can also return inside of this navigator pop every time a value. So in my case, I put here every time a number inside. However, you can also place there any object inside that you like. So in my case, if the user clicks on the action one, then we return here the value one. And if you click on the action two, the value two and so on. And this value, which we return here, we can simply await here at the top where we create here our pop up. And here you can basically call then this await method to await this number that we have put there inside. Let's also print this number to our console. Let's also try it out. I click on the action one button and then it prints here the number one in our console. And this is because the action one returns here the number one. And the same also works for the other action. For the action two, it returns the number two. And if I click on the cancel button, then it returns here null. And this is because we didn't supply here any value inside of this pop method. And finally, based on the number or the action on which the user has clicked, you can then decide what you want to do. So you can simply create here a switch statement and then you can basically check here for each of these numbers what you want to do here inside. Optionally, for each of your actions, you can also define here if it is a default action or if it is a destructive action. And therefore you simply set here this flag every time to true. If you create a default action, then it is normally something positive, which is happening if the user clicks on it. And if you create a destructive action, then it is something negative if the user clicks on it. Therefore, the destructive action is also displayed here as a red color and the default actions are displayed inside of a bold font style. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.